I have been waiting to say this for some time now. Welcome back. Now I'm back in full motion, back in full swing, doing YouTube videos again. It's been a while, but I've been so busy with work, so managing and training people at Sweat Studio, my gym, which I co-own with Jess, and also the water business, Kla, and everything else in between, and also, obviously, making gains. So this specific video is gonna be on snacking and why snacking is probably not a good idea and you should give it a miss. So stay tuned. Before I get moderately scientific on you and start going into a bit of the science why snacking is not great, let's go into a bit of the basic stuff. So if you snack, you're actually eating more frequently, so you're eating more times a day. So say if you have two solid meals and you have three different snacks in between those meals, you're eating a total of five times a day. Eating five times a day means you're probably more likely to go over your calorie allowance, go over your calorie requirements for that specific day. And also, let's bear in mind the fact that most snacks are inherently not that healthy. They may be perceived as healthy, something like a grenade bar, but it's also got a load of sugar in it, it's got a load of additives, it's got some sweeteners in the mix, it's got some soy, which I'm not a huge fan of. So it's got a lot of stuff other than the base of what it's meant to be, which is protein, and it's meant to be just a protein bar. So that's one problem I have with that. I don't mind a grenade here and there, but if you're gonna have a grenade bar, try and turn it into a meal. I'm gonna go into a short reason, well, as long a reason as possible without actually boring you after this, but try and turn it into a meal. And this is why you wanna turn it into a meal. So every time you eat, well, every time you eat something in general, insulin is released. Insulin is re released from the pancreas. It's when your blood sugar level's high, it's released from your pancreas into your blood to lower your blood sugar levels. So you have an op opposing hormone. So remember that Gluc insulin is a hormone released from the pancreas. Then you have glucagon. So not to be mistaken for glucose or glycogen, but glucagon is a hormone that's released when the blood sugar levels are low. So what insulin will do is insulin will take the sugar, whatever you've just eaten, and say, okay, let me take it, let me just take it, let me store this, let me absorb it, and that's sometimes a good thing, like after workout, it's, it's a good thing. You need an element of insulin, otherwise, you're not really gonna grow in the same way. You're not gonna develop in the same way if you don't have the element of insulin. But every time insulin is released, it's just like this, like this, it's like a curve. It's going up and up and up and up, and your body has no gradient, has no measure. It, so as little as one single peanut can spike your insulin. So while insulin is high, glucagon has no chance. And glucagon actually releases energy from cells, so release energy from fat cells, from stored carbohydrate, and puts it into the blood. So you're using up your body's your body stored matter. So in essence, it's catabolic. So insulin, anabolic, and glucagon, catabolic. So you're probably gonna to say to me, oh yeah, why the hell would I want something that's catabolic? You're gonna want something that's catabolic for a number of reasons, but for the main reason when you're trying to lose fat, if you keep triggering insulin by snacking, say you have meal one about, so let's say you have breakfast, you have meal one at 9 a.m. Then you eat again at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. is a small snack, but it's still gonna spike insulin. Then you have lunch at say 1 p.m. So insulin's going down, 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 and it's spiked again. Then it's spiked again. The only difference with having something that's more whole grain over something that's actually a complete straight up sugar is that it's gonna spike it more gradual over time the whole grain is. So say so something like brown rice or something, the spike it more gradual, more gradual over time. So it doesn't matter if it's a whole grain snack, it doesn't even matter if it's fat, because a fat can spike insulin enough. So that snacking, you're gonna keep spiking insulin, and insulin is gonna go up and up and up and up. And basically, it's essentially telling your body to store and store and store. And you only have a certain capacity in your body to store well, glycogen in the, your liver and also your muscles as well. No matter how big the person is, you look at professional bodybuilders, they all have a limit between their muscles and their liver. So 
After that limit's released, you're gonna get some overspill and it's gonna store as fat. So when we keep snacking beyond the fat that we're gonna be eating more throughout that day and we're likely, more, much more likely anyway, to reach for unhealthy food, we're gonna be consistently spiking insulin, telling our body to store, telling our body to absorb, and we don't wanna be in that state the whole day long. I don't expect everyone to say, okay, I'm gonna fast like, for X amount of time, but go through periods of fasting. It's also super gut friendly to give your stomach and digestive system a break as well because your pancreas does also release digestive enzymes. If you keep telling it to uh, release insulin, for instance, then it's never gonna have that chance to help your body digest the food properly and also repair your, your gut bacteria. Your digestive system does need a break. I'm not saying, like I just said a second ago, a few seconds ago, to, you have to fast, but fasting will be highly beneficial for you know fat loss even you can trigger you can use sorry trigger what am i talking about see this is a problem we're not doing youtubes for a while youtube videos even uh so you can trigger your body to start to want to store and store and store and that's not going to be a good state to be in and with intermittent fasting obviously you have periods of fasting and you have periods of eating so within a shorter period of time you have a less chance of obviously you know it's having that overspill and also you have that break around it so your digestive system has a break your insulin doesn't is not triggered and your glucagon can be released from your pancreas and you can start breaking down that fat breaking down adipose tissue you have and benefiting from glucagon and that's a wrap for this video so the key takeaway Ditch the snacking just try it for a few weeks see how you feel i guarantee you you will see results you will see results beyond what you've seen before. I promise you. And comment below if you have any questions. Happy to answer any questions about snacking, about fasting or anything within that realm and any other tips you may have as well. So hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit that thumbs up button. That really does help out. Helps me stay motivated to keep producing content and helps my videos rank a lot better as well. I'm going to start doing at least once a week. Uh, some sort of video, either food, uh, vlogging, or some sort of knowledge tip, or some sort of benefit of. So stay tuned and keep pushing those limits.